Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Unit Lost, I'm Starlosa and this is more EverQuest Next Landmark coverage. So what I'm going to show you today is the, uh, well I'm going to show you the selection tool, but this is going to be an advanced selection tool guide. So I'm going to show you like where you really need to be using the selection tool and how it can really help you out. So at the moment, you can see that I'm kind of deleting random bits of, uh, or random voxels trying to cut this section of the mountain out, which... That's going to take me a very, very long time. And I think a lot of people probably think that's kind of the way to do it. You know, you play Minecraft, that's kind of what you do. However, however, ladies and gentlemen, there is a selection tool. And this thing is a complete godsend. You, Everybody needs to learn how to use this. I was going to say you need to learn it, but you do. Everybody needs to learn this. So what I'm doing now is I've drawn out a selection box, okay? Now you can see different sides of the box actually highlight when I hover over them. So can you see it was highlighting blue? That means I'm going to pull it horizontal, okay? You can also click on the green, red, and blue arrows inside the uh, the actual selection tool to move it up and down. But you can see how I'm manipulating the selection box. So what I want to do is cut a massive chunk out. I basically want to level this entire area because um, I've kind of made a box around this area, like a framework, but I want to completely cut this out to give me a, uh, you know, a, a, a nice blank canvas to work on. Because I think I've got a pretty nice location here. Because what I want to do, uh, well, ultimately, is build like a nice gateway to the desert type um, kind of like shrine, temple style thing. It's going to look crazy, ladies and gentlemen. But what I'm planning to do is this build is going to feature in a lot of kind of guide videos and, and uh, build videos and stuff like that, which I'm going to do uh, in the coming days. So you can see what I'm doing is dragging this box out. And it is pretty big. Okay, but then I want to completely level this area out. If I was to do this using the delete tool, I would be here for hours and hours and hours. So what I've done there, you notice the whole box went blue. That is because I actually selected the delete tool and then clicked the selection box I've got active. And you can see what it's done instantly remove that massive section. And it's like, well, that would have taken you hours to dig out, but you can do it literally in five minutes. It's so easy. Well, in two minutes, it wasn't even five. Um, and what I just did there was I right clicked on the tree because that is actually a prop and, uh, basically removed it because well we don't I don't want a random floating tree that would be crazy so like I've just kind of outlined what I've got here so you can see stone at the top okay this is kind of like a framework that is not going to be there permanently that is just so it makes it easier for me to kind of plan out what I'm doing to make sure things are built level um, and built like within the frame that I want them built in um, I find this is an easy thing to do instead of just going at it and trying to build things because you'll end up with um, like if you want to put pillars in, for example, they'll all be different heights and it'll be impossible to match them up and you'll have to do editing all over the place. So I, f I find it's just like an easy little tip. So yeah, the selection tool is a massively powerful thing. If, I mean, if you can delete entire swathes of land like that, it is just, uh, yeah, it's quite the thing. So what I'm doing now is I'm just going to throw down some torches because it is pretty dark in this area um, because I'm going to show you how to use the selection tool to actually make templates because what I want to do is build a pillar. So I don't just want a, a simple pillar, you know, like a, a block on top of a block and maybe a couple of blocks at the bottom. I want to add a little bit of, I don't know, fanciness to it. But if I was to do that for every single pillar individually and, you know, go through the process and build it and build it and build it again, it would take an absolute age. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to design the lower half of the pillar, so the base of the pillar. Then I'm going to design the actual body of the pillar then I'm going to show you how you can piece these together and well, and also use the selection tool to select them, save them as a template and then build them together. Kind of like a, like, it's sort of like a jigsaw, but it's a really, really quick way of replicating pillars. And then ultimately, once we have the base and the main body of the pillar together, we select the entire pillar and save the whole thing. So then we've got a massive pillar. In fact, I don't think maybe I show that, but that's what you would do ultimately. So you only have to, you know, click once to drop the pillar down. So I wasn't happy with the base I put down there because it wasn't quite um, sort of thick enough for what I wanted to do. So I'm just chucking down random blocks. I've built a base, you know, that's kind of fine. Now let's... Uh... Actually, no, I'm not. No, I delete this as well. <laughs> awesome editing off me. What the hell? I'm pretty sure I delete this. Come on, stop. I delete it. What are you doing? What am I? What am I doing? What is this? No, no, no. Uh, you can see me quickly getting rid of stuff there. I'm not actually using delete tool. That is because I'm pressing control and Z on the keyboard, which is for undo. Uh, control C's copy and control V's paste, just like it is in Windows, uh, Microsoft Word or Excel or whatever you know you use. So what I've built there is a very basic sort of base of a pillar. That's very basic. But 
maybe we can add a little bit of detail to this. So what I was doing is I was messing around with a little um, cube tool. Maybe I could do something. I'm like, okay, maybe I can do something with the slope um, tool. Kind of add like a little bit here and there, sort of. I'm rotating it around and I decide to add, add a few of these around the base uh, of the kind of where the pillar meets the base. Um, you know, this isn't the best looking pillar base you'll ever see in your life. But it's me just showing you how you can actually make something that is... A little bit more fancy than your standard thing because I've noticed a lot of things that have been built initially um, when I've been wandering around the different continents and such they've been really basic like really really basic like stuff which you know people seem obsessed with building these massive like boxes uh, it, it's quite bad there are some really you know good things don't get me wrong like somebody's built like the Parthenon and that looks amazing because they've actually rounded the pillars that they've put down um, and that takes a lot of effort because you have to really use the selection and uh, the delete tools to sort of chip away to make things round um, but again I mean if you did go to that kind of length you could use the technique I'm about to show you with the selection tool and you know easily make a template it's kind of like once you've done the hard work once you don't have to do it again because you've got the template and you can just keep you know firing it out so I think what I do now is I I think I add a different form of stone or something like I'm kind of just messing around with the shapes it's like maybe this will work maybe this won't what happens if I make this a bit bigger blah 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 you know doesn't really work out so I think no I think what I end up doing is I I put squares or well, cube yeah I end up putting cubes in the middle with um, I think it's granite roof tile because it's kind of black it kind of looks pretty nice I mean, obviously, you could get really fancy and start using gemstones and stuff. But for the sake of this, I don't have enough gemstones. So if I, you know, like, if I actually wanted to do that, it would uh, completely clean all my gems out uh, of whichever gem I wanted to use. Copper actually looks quite nice as well. I'm using the copper ore, but I'd probably blow through my entire reserve of copper and only be able to make half a pillar. Because once you've actually made the templates, you can then um, throw them down. But it, it takes the combined resource cost. So I think these pillars... I think they come out at something like 900 stone for each pillar. You can see I've got 20,000 stone, so it's not really a problem. So I'm just adding bits of detail, you know, using changing the size of the tool, you know, just filling in the, the, the gap sort of thing. And I think I'll go around the whole pillar and do it. Yeah. Just to give it a bit of uniformity. Because this thing, you've got to think, it's going to be... It's literally going to be replicated up to a height of about... By, well, I don't know. I guess in, in real terms, about... 10 meters or so, uh, basically up to where I, I made the framework, which you've seen earlier on. But you'll see me place the pillars, and uh, it'll be a bit more clearer than me trying to explain it without you actually being able to see it. I mean, what the hell is that? Good lord. So I've pretty much almost finished the uh, detail and such. Well, I think I screwed that up a little bit, yeah. It, it's a little bit dark. I should have probably done this in the day, but, you know, I, I was in a creative mood. What can I say? So I've sort of just filled in the gap there a little bit. I think that kind of works. Yeah, don't look too bad. It, do, it doesn't look too bad. Um, it's got... I mean, I mean, the main thing is it's got a bit more detail to it than what you would see usually. Because, like I said, it, generally people would just build a column just out of, you know, a big cube and that's it. So what I'm doing now is I've pulled out the selection tool and I'm going to select the base of this. Um, what do I select it all? Oh, let's see what I do. Ah, yes, okay. So what I'm doing here is I'm making a template of the whole thing, and this is called a fancy pillar base. So this is kind of the base, okay? Now, I'm not going to use that out actually on the building itself. I'm going to use that as a template component to build a better template. So what I need to do now is move this up, okay? So you see how I clicked on the green arrow? Left click and hold. That, that means when I then move the mouse, it's going to move it on the uh, vertical axis, and I've moved it up above the base selection, okay? And now I can save that as a template when I just pull it down, okay? So I've got the exact space uh, selected there because I don't want, like, any empty gaps or anything. Now I can save that. Oh, I think I actually copied, yeah. So what I did there was I, I pressed Control and C and then Control and V to copy that component because I don't really want that as a template. What I want to do is make a much bigger section of the pillar as a template because what's the point of having this little, you know, section saved as a template? It would be wasted time if I was to save that and then pull it back out again. So what I'm doing is making the pillar pretty tall, like make it around about the size I kind of want it. Okay, so that's, you know, that's a pretty tall pillar. That's probably going to be okay for the front where I'm going to use this. I'm not too sure if I actually try and put more down. No. So what I'm going to do now is grab the selection tool and select the entire thing. 
So thing is going to be saved as a pillar. Now, I'm just moving up the top so I can just... Uh, in fact, I don't even know why I came up the top. I just think I just wanted to run around. I don't know. Who, who knows, ladies and gentlemen, who knows? So what I'm doing is left-clicking and holding on the green arrow to move the whole box up. And then what I'm going to do is grab the bottom of the box. So watch my mouse pointer. See? It was highlighted blue. Drag that all the way down. And now I can select the entire pillar that I've just made. But actually, it looks like I'm saving this as the... Uh, yeah, so this is the fancy pillar body. Ah, oh, yes, yes, I see. Yeah. So the reason why I did this instead of saving the whole pillar, which you could save the whole pillar, is because I wanted to mess around at the front of the actual uh, thing I've built. Well, what is going to be the front of this kind of castle thing? I think I did that anyway. I'm pretty sure I saved the whole thing. Hang on. No, okay. Well, that was me just deleting it because I don't want a pillar there. So I selected the whole thing. Press 2, which is what my delete key is bound to. Um, you can see on my hotbar at the bottom. I just deleted the whole thing because I, I don't want that. It's like, what the hell? Um, but yeah, the reason why I've got the base is because of this. I'll completely highlight this now. So I'm moving the base into position. I sort of figured it would be easier to do this than, than put the entire pillar down because it's going to give me a little bit of a, you know, I can sort of, I don't know, maybe this is just me. Maybe it would be easier if I had the whole pillar. Um, so what I'm trying to do is match this up to the um, the stone sort of support structure I've built. And as you can see, that's pretty much perfectly matched in, which is great. Now, of course, what I need to do now is make sure the pillar I place down on the opposite side is actually in the same position because if it isn't, then I'm going to have a bit of a problem. So... What I'm doing is I'm, I, uh, I'm pretty sure. I, yeah, I do. What I do is I move, I build the entire, the entire way across. Now I could have used the selection tool for this, quite easily. Uh, also, I was building off the grid there. So if you press G on the keyboard, you'll build on grid, which is snap like that, or off grid. So what I thought there is okay. I've put this down in a position where it's off the grid, but it kind of is going to go down in the same position again as you'll see, and I just sort of work around it, but. I think a lot of this is, I mean, talking about construction overall, you kind of do have to work around issues and you can be really clever. You can hide things and stuff like that. Like you've only got a certain amount of resources. So why would you use massive cubes to fill the floor when you could use the small cube and it would be the same? That's my chair as well. I don't know if you can hear that. It's, it's a bit uh, squeaky. What the hell? So yeah, I'm building the thing out. So this is just a ruler sort of thing. So I can see where I need to put the base down. I think I just slapped the mic as well. I'm sorry. I'm getting a bit animated. Um, so I know that it's going to be in the correct position, like opposite. And I think I end up using that actually. I think to myself, well, I'll just leave this here because this will be okay when I actually put the steps in. But I'll show you that in a second. So yeah, the idea. Well, you can sort of see my framework there. But like I said, that will be removed. So I'm going to put the pillar down now. I think I'm debating here whether I go all the way to the end or I'll put the pillar there. I think I just end up putting the pillar basically where I am right now. Yeah, so what I'm doing is I'm going through the template, the little house icon thingy is the template um, kind of tray or tab or whatever you want to call it. So I've got this template out now, which is the base of the uh, the pillar I've made. And I'm going to kind of align this up. I don't think I get it right straight away. Yeah, so can you see like the one on the right hand side, there's a gap at the bottom. And this one I've just put down, there was a gap at the top. So I need to make sure there's a gap at the bottom. This is kind of a really dodgy way of me making sure. So that should be correct there, that they're actually parallel to each other properly uh, and I think I kind of managed it yeah so there's a gap at the bottom and there's a gap at the bottom the other side awesome so now what's left to do is finish building the pillars so because we've got the body of the pillar selected we don't have to manually build the pillar we can just stick it right down and within about 10 seconds all of a sudden boom we've got the pillar built and it's it, it, it's I, honestly this game is such a it feels like such a next-gen thing. It feels like I'm actually building things for a game, like I'm designing a game world. It's totally crazy. You know, it's not simple and basic like Minecraft. It's com it's just ludicrous. I mean, crazy. As you can see, though, I think I need a bit of practice because that was pretty bad. I didn't really align that up properly. So now, if we look, if I move back and give us a, a pretty a decent, uh, a decent look at it, you can see we've got two pillars now, which we didn't have before. Now, obviously, I can make these fancier with adding things to them and stuff like that. Um, but... You know, that doesn't look that bad. I mean, what I'm going to do is put more pillars in ultimately, but these two just as kind of spaces, so I can sort of work out what's going on because I might need to make a different size pillar. 
or God knows what. Like I think a lot of this is like you start out with a design and then it sort of kind of goes all crazy and you end up changing it. But that's like the beauty of it. It's it's just ridiculous. So what I'm thinking now is I'm going to put some uh, steps in that kind of lead up to the front. So I've, again, what I've done is I've used a selection tool and I've filled the selection tool by using the add tool with the select um, active and filled it with, I think this is worked slate. Now what I'm doing is I'm just adding the slate template that I've made. And you can see how fast this is at, at basically creating a staircase, which is pretty, uh, you know, pretty ridiculous. And what I'm doing is I'm, swip, I'm, I'm swapping between the axis. You can see how the uh, green arrow is pointing up. So that's a vertical, that's a horizontal axis. All you do is press tab whenever you've got anything selected and it will change the axis of the tool. But if you want to change the tool, you would press shift and tab and that would uh, like, you know, give you the rotation tool or the scale tool or whatever you wanted. Uh, but obviously I don't I don't want them. I just want the, uh, the movement placement tool. Um, so what I've done is I'm pretty happy with one. See, that doesn't look too bad. You know, that, that you can see their steps, but you can see I haven't kind of done the bottom three very well. But the top four, they, they look okay to me. In fact, they look pretty good. So what I'm doing is pressing Control Z, deleting, uh, I think I deleted the three steps which I kind of didn't want. And now I'm going to bust out the selection tool and select all four of those which I placed pretty nice. And guess what? Save that as a template. And then we can just simply use it to continue building the staircase. It's so easy. But the selection tool is such a, a powerful tool. Um, I Everybody really needs to get used to using this because it's going to make building stuff, especially big stuff, really easy like you can really build stuff pretty quick i mean again you could compare it to minecraft i mean my experience is pretty limited with minecraft but when i messed around in creative mode um you know just flying about and placing blocks it could take a pretty long time just to do something as basic as a tower yet or even steps of, the, of this kind of scale yet in everquest next you can do this in like an instant so what i've done is i've selected what i want as the uh the steps and i've called them work slate batch steps because there's obviously I should have probably called it four step. I don't know. Um, and uh, yeah, so I'm just going to, I think the, the tool kind of screwed up there. So I just reload it in. And it looks totally fine. And uh, I place it, but hilariously, I don't kind of place it as perfect as I would have liked to place it. Um, but I, I will probably change that <laughs> off video anyway. But yeah, the selection tool, ladies and gentlemen, is such a powerful thing. Everybody needs to get used to using the goddamn selection tool. The things you can do with it are pretty damn good. So I think I place it there and I'll give you a quick look at what I've done. Uh, I think that rotation tool icon is a bit of a bug, but you can see that one of the steps, that the, the one I've, I was standing on just to the right of me is a little bit bigger. That's because I've sort of put the step a bit too far forward than I wanted to. But look at that, you know, I've built steps in and I've built two pillars in essentially like 18 minutes or, or so, you know, it didn't really take me very long to get to this point. I know there was a little edit in the middle of the video, but that was just because I basically went away and had something to eat. <laughs> but whatever. Um, so yeah, ladies and gentlemen, this has been uh, EverQuest Next, and it's been a look at the selection tool and how you can use it to delete, well, to select stuff and make templates and all that. It's crazy. Okay, so I've been Silo, so this is you Lost. If you like the video, then like the video. There will be more EQ Next content. I'm planning to continue this, and this is going to be a, video, uh, you know, a, a build which I'm going to carry on, and uh, it'll feature in more videos. So I think I'll leave it at that, guys. I'll catch you next time. Toodaloo.